So I was on my live stream this morning actually, and a viewer asked me to do a tutorial on OBS NDI, which for those who don't know is a plugin for OBS that allows you to stream using a secondary streaming PC without the need of a capture card. I've actually made many videos on this subject. If you wanna see some of them hit the eye in the top right corner. But what we're gonna be focusing on today is this $200 PC that I made for my brother. Here, let me grab it real quick. This right here is a Dell Optiplex tower that has an i5 2400, eight gigs of RAM, in a GT 1030 in it and this right here is going to be the test subject for this OBS NDI tutorial. My brother has been using this for a while when he does his live streams on Twitch when he's using his main gaming PC which rocks an i7 8700K and a GTX 1080 but he wants to offload the load of his main PC to a secondary streaming PC and that is what this is for and today I'm going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial to show you all exactly how you can set something like this up on your main PC and the streaming PC that you can put together for $200. Before we get into that that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. As a creator, creating content is almost second nature. Once the idea hits my mind, I almost go into autopilot, doing scripting, recording, and editing until it's complete. However, getting it seen on the crowded space that is YouTube is a whole other challenge. With TubeBuddy though, you get access to a wide range of tools like tag optimizers and search ranking results to help you optimize your content to succeed on YouTube. Want to give it a shot? Click the link down below to learn more. All right, so before I get into this tutorial, I'm gonna break down a quick explanation exactly how OBS NDI works. If for some reason you're stumbling upon this video and you're interested in the idea, but just don't quite understand how it works. So in simple terms, you're basically creating a two PC setup. A normal two PC setup is where a main gaming PC plays the games that you wanna play, and you're basically passing a signal normally using a capture card and audio mixer, which the capture card will pass the audio from the main PC to the secondary PC, and the audio mixer will allow you to pass audio to the second PC without losing audio on your main PC to actually still be able to hear what's going on. This setup is really complicated and sometimes can be very expensive to pull off. It is the best solution, however, but there is another one out there called OBS NDI, which is a solution that allows you to pass the signal from your main PC to your secondary PC via your network without having to use a capture card or audio mixer setup. The best part of this is that it's a free thing to use. So if you have a secondary PC lying around, that that you're not using, all you have to do is plug this thing up, install an instance of OBS on your secondary PC, keep the instance of OBS on your main PC, install the OBS NDI plugin on both PCs, and just link up together as long as they're plugged into the same network. To make sure they are on the same network, I highly suggest you go out and pick up a switch, which as long as you have both PCs plugged into this switch, you will be connected to the same physical network. Now towards the end of the video, I'll talk more about options of PCs that you can go with to pull off a setup like this, but a rule of thumb to follow is that you really shouldn't go much weaker than a second gen i5 processor if you're going to do something like this. You could get away with an i3, but don't expect to have the most enjoyable experience streaming at 1080p 60fps. Even with an i5 2400 PC, the best you're going to get without dropping frames is 720p 60fps with the very fast preset on OBS. Now let me go ahead and break down exactly how you install the OBS NDI plugin. Again, make sure you have OBS installed on your main PC and your second PC, and make sure both of them are running the exact same version of OBS. Then what you're going to do is click the link in the description down below and head over to this OBS NDI New Tech NDI integration plugin over on the resource page of the OBS website. Now from here you might be a little bit confused on where you actually need to download this plugin but all you really have to do is go over here to download and what it's going to do is take you to a GitHub page, which I highly suggest you download the Windows installer, the Windows.exe installer. It's a lot easier to use because it's just a click installer and you don't need to uncompress a file, um, and it's worked the best for me. Currently, we're rocking the 4.5.2 version of OBS NDI. They're always releasing new versions to fix things like audio bugs, video bugs, or any sort of issues that do happen within this plugin. But keep in mind, while this is a free service, it's most certainly not perfect. It's free, and it's passing a connection over your network. Video quality is not going to be on par with something like a capture card setup because again, you're passing a signal through your network. You're not physically passing the signal through an HDMI cable. You're passing it through an ethernet cable, which can cause some performance and quality loss. And because you're actually running an instance of OBS on your gaming PC still, there is a chance that you will have some issues. Just having an instance of OBS up on any PC, especially your gaming PC, will take away some performance numbers because OBS still has to render 
the preview of what's going on on your PC using your GPU horsepower, even if you're transferring that signal over to another PC to do all the streaming workload, your main PC is still having to put in some work with rendering that image on your screen. As you can see right here with this infinite loop, this window right here is still rendering what I'm putting on the screen right now. My GPU is still doing work creating this image on the screen. Even if I do pass this to my secondary PC, there will still be some performance loss because I'm having to render this image on screen, as opposed to a capture card PC setup where you're literally just passing an HDMI signal and you don't even need an OBS install on your main PC. Now, as I mentioned, you are going to download the Windows installer.exe file, which will download pretty quickly. It's a super quick download, as you can see right here. Sorry, my webcam's in the way. And all you're gonna do is open up this download and you're just gonna go through the basic installation process. Now, I am recording with OBS right now, so I'm gonna stop the recording right here and complete this install because I'm actually using a new PC right now to do this, and I really was going to install OBS NDI to make my life a little bit easier, but I thought it'd be a good idea to show a tutorial of how to do it while I'm actually reinstalling OBS NDI. So I'm going to stop the recording real quick because it's best to have OBS closed when you do this install, but all you're going to do is click through the installation process, hit next, 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 okay, and then you'll have OBS NDI installed. Now, once you do get OBS NDI installed on your PC, you want to hit finish and it is best practice to restart your PC so OBS can actually detect that you installed a new plugin on your PC. All right, now that I have restarted my PC, you relaunch OBS and go up to Tools. The Tools section shows an NDI output settings menu. Now keep in mind, you do need to install OBS on your secondary PC as well and follow the same procedure. Install OBS and install the OBS NDI plugin. And then you will see the option in here for main output and preview output. What you're going to do is check main output, change the name to something that you would recognize over on your other PC. So let's say streaming, PC test. Let's call it streaming PC test. Just a random name. You can put whatever you want there if you want. And what you do is you'll hit OK. And once you hit OK, you're basically sending that signal through your network for any PC with OBS NDI to be able to pick it up. So now what you're going to do is jump over to your secondary PC and do the exact same thing if you haven't done so already. Install OBS, install OBS NDI, and then what you're going to do is something special. So let's jump over to the second PC real quick. All right, so I am currently using my capture card to capture the secondary PC that is plugged in down below. I'm gonna load up my phone real quick and start a video so you can see exactly what I have going on. So if you look down here, here's my PC. This is the secondary PC and it's currently plugged into my monitor right here. As you can tell over here, this is my main PC. This is where my gaming PC is and this is basically how my gaming PC works. So what's gonna happen is this signal is gonna go to this PC via this network switch that is back here, as you can tell right on the wall. You can see it right over there that it's just a standard Netgear networking switch, and they are both plugged into the same location via an Ethernet port. Now, yes, you can do this by using something like a Wi-Fi connection, but you are probably going to have more issues than you think using a Wi-Fi connection, mainly because of just stability and things of that nature. So it's better for you to go Ethernet if at all possible. Now, this PC already has OBS NDI installed, but it's using an older version of OBS and OBS NDI. So I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm going to install the exact exact same thing and just override the version of OBS NDI that's currently on this PC to get an up-to-date version of what's installed in here so we don't have any issues. And for those who wanted to see exactly how the OBS install works, I could show you right here considering I'm capturing this PC using a capture card right now and I don't need to close out my OBS version for this to work. So basically what it's going to do is download the latest files, it's going to install the files and pretty much override what's going on right now currently on this PC. So basically forced me to close OBS to finish the install. And now they want me to restart the PC as well. So we're gonna go ahead and restart this PC and come right back once it's booted up. All right guys, so now that you have the OBS install on your streaming PC and your main PC, and you installed the OBS NDI plugin on your main PC and your streaming PC, and you restarted both PCs, now all you have to do is go to your streaming PC and add a new source. So what you're gonna do is click on the plus button right here and go to NDI source. And from here, you can click on create new NDI source. And if everything is set up perfectly, all you have to do is hit OK and select from the drop down list whatever source you have, which right here, as you can tell, is streaming PC test, the one that I made on my main PC. If you click on it here and then hit OK, your new setup should show up right on the screen. So as you can tell right here, there is some latency. So if I snap my fingers, 
there is a slight latency, but that's not a big issue because, because the stream that's going to be outputting is coming from your secondary PC and your viewers will just be a few seconds behind. There will be no audio desync or anything like that. And if I decide to change some scenes real quick, it will change on my other PC as well. You can't see it over there because, well, it's on my other PC and I'm recording my capture card on my streaming PC while showing you it working with OBS NDI. It's a very complicated setup right now, but as you can tell, it works flawlessly. Now, the benefit of something like this is the fact that you can really crank out the settings over here on your secondary PC and really make an awesome experience. Now, the benefit of something like this is the fact that you can crank up the settings on your secondary PC without having to sacrifice performance on your gaming PC. So what I can do here is go here and change the output scale resolution to 1080p if I wanted to, but since this system is only an i5-2400 PC and from my testing that doesn't work as well, you could get away with something like 864p, but I do recommend just dropping it down to 720p and setting the frame rate to 60 FPS. You can change the filter as well to 32 if you want to, but these settings have been optimal for my i5-2400 PC and for my brother, and there is very few frame drops, if at all any, when he does stream with the secondary PC. And then what you can do under output is just mess with the settings here. You can always use the very fast preset, and if you do have a higher core count PC, you could change this preset all the way down to slow, slower, medium, or fast, because there's nothing else happening on this PC. It's just encoding and streaming to the internet. Now, if you are having some issues still, here's a troubleshooting technique that did work before for me. If for some reason your signal is not passing through, it could be because your firewall on your main PC is blocking the signal to your streaming PC. So all you have to do is go to firewall, open up this menu right here, which allow you to change what apps are allowed through your firewall, click change settings, and scroll down to find OBS 64, which is right here. If you check this box, it will allow anything coming from the OBS setup on your main PC to go to your streaming PC without any issues. And if you were still having issues after that, I would double check to make sure you have the same OBS install on your main PC and streaming PC, and make sure you have the same NDI install version on the gaming PC and the streaming PC. And if you are still having issues, I will link to a forum down below that will help you with certain troubleshooting techniques. They are really good at helping you over there if you have any issues. It's a link to the OBS NDI forum where a lot of people there who know a lot about the install process can help you out if you do come across any issues. And I will try my best in the comment section down below to help you all out as well if you do need help there. And and that about wraps this video up here, guys. If you like this video, leave a like down below and comment in the eye in the comment section down below if you made it this far. If you're interested in a more in-depth guide where I give you some PC part selections for streaming PCs, please let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to make that video. Also, again, if you have any questions, please comment down below. We'll try our best to help you all out if you do have any troubleshooting issues. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to help support the stream. Like this video if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, and follow all our other social media platforms to get updated on all things Toasty Bros. Thanks again, guys, for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next next one. Peace out, guys.